Hello everyone. I was invited to attend a panel in the European Council in 26th of January 2023. The panel was about why and how uh, anti-money laundering legislations and uh, terrorism financing legislation have, have been abused by authoritarian regimes to stop human rights activists and also uh, opposition or dissidents in their own countries. So Russia, Turkey, Kazakhstan, various countries are actually using anti-money laundering legislations by European Union and also terrorism financing legislations to put some strain on their opposition and the people who they don't like. Um, I was invited there because uh, I am also a victim of this case. But I would like to take a moment and say why this is an important issue because uh, money laundering through banks and various institu institutions are a very, very serious case and also terrorism financing as well since the 9-11. And uh, it is understandable that there should be like constant regulations on these issues and the financial markets and financial institutions has to be careful about that. But the way authoritarian regimes start to, to abuse this system is also important because they can actually uh, call their dissidents, call their opposition as money launderers or terrorism finances, and they can get them into very, very serious problems. Um, this doesn't mean like this happens within those countries like Russia and Turkey or uh, Poland or Kazakhstan or China. It also means that this could happen if the, that said person is in European Union or even in United Kingdom. I have uh, prepared a PhD thesis on Gulen movement in 2014 in United Kingdom. And 2016 July there has been a coup attempt where the Erdogan regime has accused Gulen movement of organizing and 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 attempting to take over the government by a coup attempt which has been denied by the by the involved parties but because it was about my academic area i have been speaking about this topic on youtube and public media uh, in you know various occasions and since then i have started experiencing various difficulties like my Twitter accounts have been blocked and to circumvent that I opened a new account which is blocked again my other institutional accounts have been blocked my YouTube videos being blocked my YouTube main page have been blocked in Turkey my Patreon account have been blocked in Turkey all this sort of stuff in Turkey with court decisions without me having a right to defend myself and with obviously with the Twitter's complicit uh, regulations this has been all done and but things got even worse in uh, 2021 December when Erdogan decided to put put together a list of people who have been in his in his opinion uh, financing terrorism and I was listed in that list as someone who is financing terrorism which there is no evidence or any case about it as well but because of that list uh, specifically suggest that financing of terrorism it went into international uh, credit agencies and various places like uh, Refinitiv and other world check uh, database searches and now they have to or according to their opinion they have to uh, report this incident to their customers like banks and others when they do credit check in a detailed credit check they will be able to see that I am somehow accused of financing terrorism which means like there's a something flags up in my account and then most of the banks uh, and financial institutions doesn't want to deal with these issues uh, for that reason i'm I, I suspect that my western union account has been blocked my wise account has been blocked and i have started having difficulty with my personal uh, banking and business banking uh, although I am using I, I am using those banks for a very long time and we have a good communication, we have overcome some of those issues, but it it has put a it, it has put a bit big strangle over all sorts of affairs. It's very unlikely that I will be able to get a mortgage even this high interest rates, or I would get a lease easily as I should be. So these are all happening because uh, of me 
being in, 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 in a list of a government who is trying to abuse the system of uh, anti-money laundering regulations and uh, uh, terrorism financing regulations. The problem with that is that if this is allowed to continue in this way, uh, this will get worse. Like this year, Erdogan regime has added some other political uh, dissidents and uh, journalists who are living in exile and who are broadcasting against him onto that list and expecting their, their life to become difficult with the help of uh, Western institutions and credit agencies and uh, other you know, uh, security bureaucracy. Um, a similar thing has happened about the Interpol database as well. Interpol was informed at the very beginning of 2017 uh, that a number of passports has been cancelled in Turkey. These are the, the passports that belong to dissidents in Turkey. So Interpol eventually realized that this was a political decision, so they didn't implement that. But then what happened is then uh, Erdogan regime started reporting passports as stolen, like as if I have given a, a, a petition to government as, as if my passport has been stolen, so I want it to be uh, declared null and void and stuff. So even if I were to walk into a, a, pa uh, you know, a passport checkpoint and present my Turkish passport, uh, the police in there would be able to see that that passport has been stolen and it is reported by me that it has been stolen. So who am I to use that passport to create that sort of a problem? I don't know whether you remember, but the uh, famous NBA player uh, Enes Kanter had a similar problem in, in Romania and was, was able to be rescued by American authorities and with their intervention. So this sort of abuse actually uh, creates a big problem for Interpol and now a similar version is creating a huge problem for uh, for dissidents and political opposition in the various part of the world because if European Union and other legislative bodies don't take precautions this will become not a tool to make money laundering difficult but in fact it will make it uh, difficult for a political opposition to survive and to 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 thrive and in various authoritarian countries and in fact the amount of thousands of people reported as uh, you know uh, financing terrorism and money laundering issues would also make it difficult to catch real criminals out there as well so i think there there needs to be some sort of a reconsideration so a, a way of uh, fixing this problem. For that reason I have attended that panel, talked about my story, tried to meet with a member of parliaments from various countries and explain why it is important that they should discuss this issue. And most recently, I think in 30th of January, I have learned that this, this motion will be discussed in the European Council at some point and hopefully there will be a good result coming out of it. For that reason, I think it's important for people like me to come out and speak about their problems in various levels to, with their MPs, local uh, MPs and U European Parliament members and, and hope that we can r r solve this problem without getting even more serious, without, getting, uh, without becoming a tool for authoritarian regimes like Russia and Turkey to or China, Russia and Turkey to abuse international system against their own political agenda uh, or against their own political uh, dissidents and opposition. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'll be talking about this issue and related issues uh, in my English YouTube channel as, as well. Please uh, do like and follow and write your comments in the comment section below and see you in the next video.